Hello and welcome back to the Elliot Hulse Show. This series has been about the 40 ways I've been wrong over the course of my 40 years here in life. And uh, this is episode four, but this show is a little different. The first three shows came from my original list that I posted in the video where I went over all the 40 things I was wrong about in my 40 years. So um, as this podcast is evolving and as I'm making my way through those 40 things I was wrong about, I want to interject a few really fascinating subjects and guests to add some flavor to the show. And that's what we have going on today. So we're not necessarily talking about something I was wrong about, but we're going to talk about something that I discovered over the course of the last probably four years uh, that has had a tremendous impact on my life. So much so that I've been sharing these ideas that we're going to go over today with, uh, and, and with my guests uh, in my videos and in some of my workshops at Grounding Camp. And people always seem to find it very fascinating and very resourceful. And what I'm talking about is this idea that we go on a new hero's journey, if you will, a, a, a brand new start, a clean slate every 12 years. So uh, the first time I heard this, you know, these 12 year cycles that we're going to be talking about in this show, um, it rang a bell immediately because I recognized that, number one, I've got more 24 year olds that follow me than almost any other age bracket. It's been this way since I started making YouTube videos. Whenever I go into a crowd and I ask how many people are 24, there's always a great percentage at 24. And I used to just think that was a coincidence. Um, I thought there was something to it, but I didn't have uh, the language to explain what you're going to learn about today. And I also remember being 24 years old. I remember at age 24 really feeling like my life has been turned upside down. Uh, just like many of the young men that follow me, the, between the ages of 24 and 27, it seems almost like you've been kicked off the cliff and you're trying, to, you're trying to flap. You're trying to figure out how to get this thing going, but you don't even know up from down. You don't know where you are. There's a state of confusion that usually sets in around 24 years old. Now, what really nailed it for me, that these 12-year cycles are real, and I'm going, to have a, I'm going to have our guests talk to you a lot more about that and, and the exact map of these 12 years, is when I turned 36. And uh, this was before I understood or came in contact with this idea of the 12-year cycles. But at age 36, <clears throat> my life felt like it was being turned upside down. Uh, those of you who've been following me long enough, you know that uh, around the age 36, you know, three, four years ago, uh, it's when I stopped making YouTube videos, I closed my gym and, uh, and uh, partnered up with Chris Barnard and opened up another gym. Really, like everything that I knew about myself, what I expected from myself, and how I was going about my life was revolutionized completely. And it was painful because when you spend a season of life building up your ego, you know, your character, your personality, your identity, uh, and your life around that, and then it gets kind of pulled out from underneath you, there is, uh, there, you'll be lost. There's a lot of confusion. And for me, it was even more pronounced because it's not just me. You know, of course, I got a family. I got four children, but I got millions of people who follow me online who uh, it was a little bit odd. I'm an odd guy anyway, but it was a little bit odd that around age 36, you know, three, four years ago, uh, Elliot Hull stopped making YouTube videos. I was like, what's going on there? And, uh, and again, I was just following my intuition. I was following my gut, following my heart. A lot of you guys love my videos where I tell you to follow your heart and, and believe in your instinct. And then, uh, and then when I go ahead and do it, you know, everybody throws a, a hissy fit. Um, but to the, to the day I die, I'm following my heart, man, right to the grave. Even if I'm wrong, I'm following that heart because it's about, all about conviction and knowing thyself. So, uh, I thought it would be interesting to explore this idea of the 12 year cycles and, and the path of initiation with you guys here today, because it, it's really a roadmap. It's been a roadmap for how to navigate life in its various stages, various seasons and, uh, and the various seasons within seasons. So my intention for this show 
is to discover more about the 12 year cycles of initiation I've spoken about in previous videos and events, uh, how to know where you are within the cycle so that you could be better navigate your life. You know, I, I talk about age 24 and 36 uh, as being significant, but every year is significant. And every year along this, if you can imagine like a clock, uh, every year uh, is, is, is colored by a different veneer, a different uh, aspect of our consciousness, if you will. So, you know, one, two, three, four, right until six. Six is just as significant. I mean, every hour is significant, but think about it. You come to the bottom of your clock and, uh, and you're making your way all the way back around. There are very predictable ways of experiencing life during each one of these hours. And I want to explain, I want to talk to you guys about that. And that's what my guest is going to, my guest expert is going to be talking to you guys a lot more about. Uh, and we're also going to be learning about astrology in the golden age or what my guest calls cosmic consciousness. So I want to continue uh, briefly about astrology because I know that this is something that, you know, uh, not only may not necessarily be of interest to a lot of you guys who are watching, right? You're not, you're not following me because it's an astrology channel. You're following me for uh, strength training, personal development, uh, being the strongest version of yourself. But... I'm willing to explore so many different realms of, uh, of um, you know, possibilities. And astrology is one of those that I've found fascinating. So I want you to stick around. I want you to stick around. Have an open mind. Uh, astrology has been around a long, 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 long time. Ancient. It's found in many ancient cultures from, you know, Chinese astrology to Greek astrology to uh, Egyptian. So African, I mean, all cultures have various ways of understanding what's going on on the planet um, physically and physiologically and psychologically, metaphysically, uh, by, the, by the cycles and seasons of the celestial bodies. Go figure. Even like uh, Benjamin Franklin, you know, I'm, I'm kind of reaching here, but when he wrote uh, um, the, the, the almanac, you know, he'd write these almanacs. I mean, it's based on seasons and cycles, you know. I forget what he calls it. Good, good something Albanac, but Benjamin Franklin, you know, this was like a, this was like a periodical that people would buy every year in America to understand what's going on this year, you know, with the way, with the way the celestial bodies are set up, right? Cosmic consciousness. So it's old, it's older than Christianity. And, uh, I love Jesus, love Christianity, love religion in all its ways. Um, but many Christians, Many people of religious dogmatic belief uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, they say that uh, astrology is uh, of the devil or something weird like that. Well, what you ought to know, which I think you'll find fascinating, if you've got an open mind, is that, you know, those three wise men that come to bring baby Jesus, his gifts when he's being born, uh, they found that Jesus would appear and where he would appear based on following the stars. You guys know this. If you read children's stories about the Christmas and baby Jesus and stuff like that, uh, you know that the, the wise men, the three wise men that knew Jesus was going to appear, where he was going to appear, were following the stars. Would it, go figure, you know? And I think, it's, I think it's significant that we call Jesus the sun. And if you think about the sun as our life giver here on this planet, our creator, um, I think it's fitting. Even the, I've heard and I've explored astro theology that likens the 12 disciples onto the 12 zodiac signs and Jesus being in the center of the, as the sun. Uh, if you look up and do your own research, you know, there are some really good videos on YouTube uh, in the realm of astro theology as, as, and in particular, I wish I remember the cha channel, but he showed how uh, the, la the, the painting of the Last Supper, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, he really points to a lot of uh, what's going on astrologically in that picture. Fascinating stuff. Why would Leonardo da Vinci have, uh, have astro theology in one of the paintings that Christians hold so dear? So it's just, it's just good stuff to look into. And it, this, and. As is with all of my videos, my objective here is not to change your mind, uh, convince you of anything, or to prove that I'm right. 
They're just fascinating ideas that I love to explore. So great leaders, <clears throat> another thing about astrology, great leaders of ancient cultures have used astrology and intuitive arts for the longest time. The very first thing that came to my mind was uh, Alexander the Great and, uh, and, the, and the soothseer or the, the, um, the intuitive that predicted his rise um, and so on and so forth. So there were, there were many great leaders who uh, uh, took chances and did the things that they did based on what the stars were telling them. And so one of the things you got to understand also is that astrology is an intuitive art. It's not meant to be right. It's not meant to be scientific. Uh, in fact, when you're listening to someone uh, offer a reading or, or tell you a little bit about what's going on in the, in the celestial bodies, in the, in, the, in the cosmic consciousness, you know, you got to, in a way, take it with a grain of salt because it's that person's intuition. It's, what's, it's what they're feeling and thinking and what they're receiving at the, at the moment. And I really and truly believe in the power of intuitive arts. I really believe that in the power of our intuition. And so uh, this is just one of the most fascinating scientific ways of uh, creating boundaries around our, uh, around our intuition, right? Like, because there are rules, there are rules to astrology. There's mathematics going on. And as my guest will, guest will probably talk about, there is uh, sacred geometry going on here with the, with the celestial bodies, the stars, the planets, the signs. So uh, again, it's not meant to be right or totally scientific. It's sort of a, it's sort of a combination between science and intuitive arts. Briefly, my experience with astrology, uh, particularly with my guests here, uh, is I've never been in, it's, it's never been like something that's been of great interest to me. I've never been a, uh, you know, studied it or anything like that. But for some reason, it was the strangest. All my life, whenever I would like open up a newspaper and I'd read just the Zodiac for fun, uh, it always seemed like when they spoke about Aries, which is my sun sign, that they were spot on. It always seemed to describe me pretty close. Uh, and it wasn't until when I turned about age 36 that, uh, that I was kind of grasping. I was kind of, uh, you know, like I said, we're, we're kind of swimming lost in that, in that phase of the journey, you know, that getting started phase. And a friend of mine who also happens to be an Aries tagged me on a, uh, on an, uh, on a, on a, on an astrology post, a Zodiac update for Aries. And it was astonishing how accurate this reading was. And so I decided to follow the link and uh, I ended up on a website called The Cosmic Path by Stephanie Azaria, who's our guest. And uh, it turns out that she has a very unique way of understanding astrology. And, uh, and she has been so helpful to me. And her, uh, her weekly updates have been so spot on for me over the past four years that I even decided to hire her as a coach and I took her class. So um, like I even have my notebook here because I can't wait to talk to her about all this cool stuff in here that I think you guys are gonna find fascinating, really cool. Um, you're gonna learn about the cosmic path of initiation, these 12 year cycles that I talk about. And you're also gonna learn about uh, how each one of the signs have been upgraded for the golden age, this is how she describes it. And um, you know, you may have read uh, Zodiac stuff before in the past, and maybe it doesn't resonate with you. You may find that her work resonates a little bit better with you. Or what you might need to know also is that, see, for me, it, it, it it's pretty spot on because I'm like a double Aries. I have a lot of Aries. I'm not just a sun sign in Aries, but, you know, uh, astrology, I mean, um, the ruling planet of Aries is Mars. And I also happen to have Mars and Aries. So I'm like super spot on with my sun sign, but you may want to explore your rising sign, your moon sign. There's so much more to it. And if you're interested, you can learn more. So uh, my guest teaches astrology for the golden age. So there's a lot of upgrades. Each sign has been assigned a new archetype. She calls them their archetypes. Pretty cool. Every 12 months, we start a new journey around the uh, around the signs each month, representing a different quality of consciousness. So this is pretty cool because every year, like for example, last month was my birthday. I started at the top of the clock. And it's been so fascinating and fun for me over these past few years to watch how all of the seeds that have been planted during the month of my birthday, because it's very significant, come full circle and are uh, and come to fruition 
as you make your way around the clock and by the 11 o'clock hour, it's, you know, the things that were happening around your birthday, you'll start to see their fruits. I, and I encourage you, anybody who, uh, you know, if you're just listening to this and it's fun and you keep a journal, take a notice, take notice as to what's happening around your birthday month. That was the first thing that my teacher, Stephanie here, told me to do. Always pay attention around your birthday month. So every month, every year, we're going around the, the clock. Each month of the year is presided by or, or colored by a different sign. So there are qualities associated with it. There's ways of being that are associated with it. There's affirmations associated with every single month that you go through this journey. And then every 12 years, like I said, same thing happens. Each year you are going, you're moving through a different sign and there are different qualities associated with it. So it's funny because last year I was in my Aries year. Aries is about waking up. And it's so funny because the last 12 months up until April of this year, I had been waking up. The previous three years has been like, I've been receiving things, very receptive, trying to figure out what's going on. And then as soon as my birthday hit last month, last year, bang, I knew exactly what I wanted to do and that's why I'm here making these videos and stuff. This year that just started is my Taurus month, which is has a lot to do with buckling down and getting to business. And that's why you know, in my life, I'm experiencing a lot of that. So anyway, we're going to talk about each one of those signs. I, I want you guys to be able to take this conversation with my teacher and use it as a roadmap for your own life. Um, it's been very helpful to me, and I hope you enjoy my conversation here with my teacher, friend, and mentor, Stephanie Azaria. Welcome to the show, Stephanie. Thank you, Elliot. I'm so happy to be with you. Yeah, very excited. This is pretty cool. So, you teach that each of the horoscope signs in astrology have mm -hmm. been upgraded and, and, and changed. Can you tell us more about what that means and how it happened? Sure. Um, well, I've been an astrologer for more than 50 years, it's kind of my life's work. I've worked with classical astrology for all those years. And I've also been on the spiritual path for quite a few years, probably 40 years or so. And somewhere around 10, 12 years ago, uh, the, my consciousness expanded in a way that made me realize that the signs, which, I'm, which are like, I know, like the back of my hand, um, have so much more meaning than we've ever given them uh, credit for. You know, I was sitting in the Redwood Forest with a group of people. This is how it started, actually. I was sitting in the Redwood Forest, and we were sitting in a circle with all these stunning redwoods around us, and we were feeling their incredible consciousness. And I thought to myself, have these trees been this conscious all along or is it, is it, and is it just me that's becoming conscious of how conscious these trees are? Or are we becoming conscious together? Or where, where is the consciousness coming from? Then I realized it's, it's, it's us. We are expanding our consciousness. And as our consciousness expands, we become aware of what's really there. And that includes everything. The whole system that I work with I don't call it astrology anymore. I call it cosmic consciousness because it's the consciousness of the cosmos and it's the awareness of how the cosmos is the mirrored reflection of your higher self. It's somewhat collective, like we can look out there and see a zodiac. We all see the same zodiac, but we see it for reasons. Uh, it's a long story to explain why the ring of animals came about, but it's basically the reflection of the consciousness that was looking at it in the beginning. I mean, men and women were working the land and they were working with nature and they were working with animals and that's what they saw when they looked out there into the cosmos, they were seeing their own reflection. But we are no longer just that and I don't mean to diminish nature or the animals they're very significant but it's not all that our cosmic self is about 
And so as consciousness expanded, the signs began to expand in my own consciousness. And I began to see them for more of what they are. I won't even pretend to say I know everything that they are, but I see them very, very differently now. So, for example, in this new system, we don't begin with Aries, we begin with Capricorn, because Capricorn is the sign that is connected to the winter solstice and the galactic center, the center of our galaxy. So that's where the zodiac really begins in the, in the, in the 5D or higher experience of consciousness. Capricorn was thought of as a goat, and it does have those qualities of climbing a mountain and reaching the goal. But that's a very 3D, and when I say 3D, I mean fear-based, separation-oriented consciousness. That's what the 3D consciousness is. The 5D consciousness lifts up to realize we're all one and nothing is separate from anything else, and it all has part of a, it's all part of a greater purpose. So Capricorn moves from the goat to the executive director. Capricorn is the sign that knows how to stand at the top of the mountain that it has conquered, and it knows exactly what to do with any situation that needs taking care of, whether it's organizing or whatever. It can do anything. It can put it together. It can take it apart. It just always knows what to do. That's a higher perspective, a more conscious perspective on Capricorn. So all the signs have shifted in that way. And I don't think it's just me. I mean, I'm the one who named these things. And I'm always open to uh, anyone's observations, but they seem to resonate with everyone. Aquarius has moved from the water bearer, which actually didn't make sense to a lot of people. A lot of people thought Aquarius was uh, a water sign because it was called the water bearer. But in consciousness, water is the sign of consciousness. Aquarius is the consciousness bearer, and we call it the great awakener. When an Aquarian's in the room, it is representative of what has to change, what the future holds. And so people can have all kinds of responses to that, but it is the one that wakes you up to what's next. That's what Aquarius consciousness does. I want to point out that we all contain all the signs within us. Mm -hmm. Nobody's lacking anything. But when you choose a sun sign and you do choose your sun sign, you choose the moment of your birth, you choose your family, and so you choose the location of your birth. So you literally choose your birth chart. That's all you need is a date, time, and place for a birth chart. Mm -hmm. You choose your sun sign, which means you choose the quality of consciousness, which is what the signs are that you want to learn to identify yourself with thoroughly in this lifetime. That makes sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so moving on, Pisces has been known as the fish, and we would think of it as the sign that swims in every direction, swims in different directions. But really, Pisces rep is, is represented by the ocean itself. Pisces is the sign that is limitless. It is a sign that is selfless. It is the sign that contains all consciousness and needs to learn to become aware of self. It's a, we call it selfless, which we could sometimes interpret as compassionate, which it is, but that's not what that means. That means Pisces doesn't think of the self. Pisces thinks of the self as part of everything else, part of the oneness. And that is a very vast consciousness, but we don't come here and embody ourselves to just be one with everything. We have to self-realize first and then recognize that we're one with everything. So Pisces has a big task. It has to kind of chunk down its consciousness, if you will, to learn about itself so that it can then take its ultimate consciousness of being one with everything and put it to good use. That makes sense. Aries, which has been known as the ram, you know, the head-butting, <laughs> uh, me-first kind of energy. <clears throat> really, Aries is the sign that goes first. In fact, it is the sign that has to be present for anything to begin, which is why I call it the divine spark of creation. <clears throat> Aries is the sign that begins everything. 
and <clears throat> sorry, when it recognizes itself as such, it really becomes very empowered in its creative capacity. To start things up and make it all happen. It's a power sign, it's a sign that makes things happen. Taurus has been known as the bull, the immovable, stubborn one for many years. But Taurus is immovable in a very positive sense. I call it the tree of life. I like to think of Taurus as the redwood tree. It's rooted in the ground, it's got its head in the clouds. It's fully present all the way through. It runs the whole gamut physically of the core of the earth to the heavens. It's present everywhere. Presence is the key to, to Taurus consciousness. And it's very stable, very present, very loyal. It's kind of like when you, if you have a gorgeous tree on your property and you leave your house every day, that tree, you may not hug it every day, but it's there and it gives you security knowing that it's there. And that's the thing that Taurus does. It's always there for you, whether it's in front of you or not. It's there, you know it's there. Mm -hmm. Gemini is a very interesting sign. It's been known as the twins. It's been known as the sign that deals with duality. It's been called two-faced. <laughs> And that sort of thing, but that's, I think it's seriously maligned, that sign. What, what, what Gemini really is, is a multifaceted, very brilliantly creative consciousness. I call it the diamond. It's not two-sided. It's very multi-sided. And it, 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 it's, it's always in motion. When I first started lifting these symbols, I first called Gemini the disco ball. Because <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. it really is a lot like that. It's very dazzling and it's always moving and you never know which facet you're gonna come face to face with. It's like that, but it's much more precious than that. And that's because Gemini is the part of our consciousness. Gemini people, when they're awake, have the capacity to lead us out of duality because they're so familiar with it. They're so familiar with the two sides of anything. When you come face to face with a Gemini, you don't know which facet you're going to come face to face with, and neither does the Gemini. Things come together energetically so that whenever a Gemini meets another soul, some part of themselves comes forward. And whatever part comes forward, there's an opposite part. There's a polar part that Gemini is always aware of. It's a very conscious sign, but it has to get out of its head in order to realize how conscious it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cancer has been known as the crab. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> um, the crab is a very slow moving sign it moves sideways it's cautious its bones are outside its body <laughs> you know it's just it's just a a low to the ground kind of nervous scaredy cat kind of energy which is not at all what cancer is cancer is the earth mother cancer is the mother cancer is the sign that nurtures everything in its realm its heart goes out to everything and wants to care for everything it's a very it's the sign of emotional power it's a deeply emotional sign and it knows how to share its emotion with people when people allow them to share their emotion mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a lot to be learned in each sign and that is the journey of awakening uh, Leo has been called the lion, the king of the jungle. It's actually the, the life force. Leo is most closely associated with the sun. Uh, it's here to shine its light and be a life force for everything that it touches. It's extremely creative. And its creativity is vital to the planet. It has to know how vital it is. And really... Leos are forever chasing some sort of goal when in fact their whole purpose is to be the light, just shine as brightly as possible. Mm -hmm. 
then they're doing their thing and people are responding and there's a real a real a real reason to be hmm. virgo is a very fascinating sign in fact virgo is the reason why i changed everything <laughs> So Virgo was known as the Virgin, and you know, it still is sort of that. It's the Virgin Mother energy. The Virgin Mother is literally the Mother Mary, the progenitor of the Christed consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. the, the Virgo consciousness is here to purify its heart, and then out of that pure heart births the higher self, the Christ itself. It's a super conscious sign. It's also a mother energy. Cancer and Virgo are both mother energies. They're different aspects of the mother, but in truth, there's only one mother. So Cancer is the earth mother. Virgo is more like the divine mother. Also, Virgo has a real connection with Chiron, the master healer teacher. So I say, I swear, there isn't a Virgo on the planet that has been spent lifetimes as a healer. Hmm. May not be a healer now, but every Virgo has a little bag of tricks that they use to help people out or be of assistance wherever they can. Libra <clears throat> has been called the scale. And so it's thought to be a balancing mechanism. The problem with that Libra, all Librans are born with a very objective awareness born with the gift of objectivity. They lack subjectivity. It's very hard for Librans to focus on themselves. They're always focused on everyone else. That's the problem. It's a gift and a problem. Libra needs to begin to think of itself as the mirrored self. In that way, it can attain the highest realization there is, which is that there isn't anybody out there but your own reflection. So when people are talking to you or you're having an issue with someone or you're falling in love with someone or you're interacting with someone, you're actually dealing with some part of yourself that you have been unable to recognize because it's hard for Libra to look at the self. That's how Libra gets a look at itself. Right? When you look in the mirror, you see really your reflection. You don't really see yourself. You're seeing a reflection of yourself. And that reflection comes from your own capacity to see your own consciousness. And if you don't like what you see in the mirror, you have to change you, not the reflection. That's how that works. Right? <clears throat> it's a very intricate sign, Libra is. Scorpio has been called many things. It's been called the scorpion, it's been called the eagle, and um, it's been called the phoenix. It's had all three of those uh, animal kingdom labels, but I call it the alchemist. Scorpio is a very deeply rooted water sign, deeply rooted in the core, deeply rooted in consciousness. When Scorpio walks into a room, the frequency changes automatically, and it can sense what's going on in a split second. It's got a very alchemical consciousness. It needs to learn to trust itself and it needs to learn to let, it be, let itself be as vast as it really is. Because Scorpio has very big energy and it's almost always afraid of its own power. Hmm. So it needs to learn to be as powerful as it is. So it can really begin to understand how its energy changes everything transmutes alchemy is the transmutation of things from lesser uh essence to more precious essence from lead to gold that's what alchemy does right mm -hmm. and finally sagittarius which has been called the archer half centaur half man i call a sagittarius the truth seeker it's not about being half man, half horse, half human, half animal. It's about the arrow that it carries, that it's pointing at source, at the galactic center, which is source, which is at the very end of Sagittarius. It's about finding the truth of everything. Sagittarius moves through its life with great adventure, with a great sense of adventure, but its whole purpose is to understand what's true. 
in every situation. And ultimately, if it can be comfortable enough, it can share what it knows to be true. And that's ultimately its purpose, to gather the truth and share it. So those are uh, all the up upgrades, if you will. I think you call them upgrades. <laughs> they are, they are uh, shifts into the, a more expansive perspective on each of the signs. And it's the very beginning of cosmic consciousness, really. The signs are just a part of it, right? There's a lot more to it than that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the, this quote-unquote upgrade to the signs that really first struck me when I discovered your work. And then I was pleased to find so much more once I got you know, a little closer to you when we started coaching and I took your class. And one of the things that really like stuck out to me next, and or perhaps is just as or maybe more useful, is the cosmic clock. Yeah. Tell us what the cosmic clock is and how it works. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the cosmic clock is the basis of the 5D system of astrology. Uh, I didn't make it up. It's a system that was given to the world by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, who has transitioned now, but she was an amazing spiritual teacher herself. And um, she was known as Guru Ma when she was alive. And she and her husband, Mark Prophet, were very prolific and they wrote many books and they were known as the messengers and they delivered the messages from the ascended masters. The ascended masters delivered all their information through them. And one of the books she wrote was called The Cosmic Clock. And it described a system that was delivered to her when she was nine years old by Mother Mary. And Mother Mary said, this is the system of astrology for the golden age. And it has to be an inner teaching of the ascended masters. And the basis of that system is the cosmic clock. So anyone who knows astrology knows that when you look at a birth chart or you set up a birth chart, the zodiac is set up running counterclockwise. You set it up so the signs run backwards around the outside of the clock. And, you know, when I was studying astrology, I asked every teacher I ever had why that was so. Every one of them gave me a different answer, and not one of them made any sense. The only thing that makes sense to me is the explanation that comes from Elizabeth Clare Prophet and the Masters, which is that we all live on the spiral of life. We all are eternal sparks of light that live on our own little spiral that gets created by the golden ratio, which produces the spiral of life. We see it in our DNA. We're all made out of those spirals. A spiral has two directions, up and down. If you want to move up toward source, you have to move clockwise. If you want to move down toward the physical, you have to move counterclockwise. So a birth chart is set up counterclockwise because it's a chart of a physical incarnation. But when we want to raise our consciousness out of the world of separation and ego and connect with the higher self, we need to start moving around our own birth chart in a clockwise fashion. So that's what the cosmic clock is. We're going to take the clock and we're going to put it right on top of the birth chart. And then we start the clock on your birthday every year at the midheaven at 12 o'clock, it's just a regular clock, but each of the hours on the clock is associated with a sign, just in the order that I just named them before, beginning with Capricorn. And we begin on our birth date at the Capricorn hour, and we, each year we move around the clock on the, uh, each, each month on the date of your birth. So if you're born on the 20th, then every month around the 20th, you have some kind of an initiation. And the initiation is something that happens that delivers you to the next chapter of your journey. It could be simple, like you hear from a friend you haven't heard from in 10 years. Or it could be something extremely spiritual and elaborate, like you have a dream where a master comes and gives you an initiation, right? 
or you have an amazing meditation where you connect with a master. All of those things can be initiations, but the initiation is always going to be associated with the next hour of the clock. Each hour of the clock is associated with part of your being, um, whether it's one of your etheric bodies, the clock is set up very differently from the chart. The clock has four quadrants. Uh, the first three hours represent your spiritual body. The next three hours represent your mental body. The next three, your emotional. And the last three are your physical. So each year, you come to a new hour on the clock. So you go around the clock once a year. You also go around the clock once every 12 years. Time is fractal, right? So there are time, there are every 12 years, we begin an entirely new 12 year cycle. And that 12 year cycle is really related to our social experience. It's, uh, you know, think about it. When you turn 12, you go through puberty. When you turn 24, you become a young adult. When you turn 36, you become a, a full blown adult. When you turn 48, right? Those are very socially oriented cycles. So we go around the clock once every 12 years and each year on our birthday, we come to a new hour and each monthly initiation relates to that particular hour that we're in that year. And moving around the clock clockwise gives us the opportunity, first of all, to know exactly where we are in our energy field, but also to work with any misqualified or fear-based energies that might be associated with that particular part of our consciousness and to very consciously with great self-awareness, clear out those karmic, that karmic debris. And it literally has the effect of clearing out your energy field. So you become literally become enlightened, like it's a mechanical form of enlightenment. It requires discipline and focus and hard work but so does anything spiritual, right? You can't get on the path and play. You have to get on the path and work hard and be devoted and be disciplined. Did that explain? So the clock is the way to correct the consciousness and begin to turn it in the right direction and move us towards source. And we use it, we make use of it by bringing our consciousness to exactly where we are on the clock. Right, so whatever year you're in, if you're 36, then you have entered a 12 o'clock year. And so you're working with that part of your consciousness, which is spiritual power. There are three qualities, power, love, and wisdom. They correspond to the trifold flame in the heart that is part of the spiritual being. An awakened soul has a very awakened heart chakra, and the heart chakra has the three flames in it, the flames of power, love, and wisdom. And those are uh, the qualities in cosmic consciousness. If you know anything about astrology, they replace cardinal fixed immutable signs, which are far more about action-oriented stuff that have to do with the physical realm. Power, love, and wisdom have to do with consciousness. And each of the etheric bodies, each quadrant, has one hour that relates to power. So there's a spiritual power, there's a mental power, there's an emotional power, and a physical power. And then there's also one that relates to love and one that relates to wisdom. And so the power signs are the power of that part of your being. If you're in the Capricorn year, you're in the, in the year where you are working on your spiritual power, and the, your connection with your higher self. That's what the whole year is going to be about. If you're working on the Aquarius year, that is the year of spiritual love, where you're learning to love yourself unconditionally, the way source would love you. And so every initiation you have during that year, and of course, when you work with me, I mean, that's what I do. I facilitate this journey around the clock. So when it comes time for your session, you would send me a journal which would involve the few days around your birth date, and you would tell me what's going on, whatever, whatever you want to tell me, because that will show me what's going on with you with your initiation. I could talk to you then about what you're ready for at that point, because you're telling me what you're ready for with mm -hmm. your journey. 
see. So it is um, a truly remarkable thing. I've been working with it for approximately, I'm going to say 10 years now. I have a couple of people who are on their eighth journey around the clock. Mm -hmm. It just because it keeps on lifting you. It keeps on expanding you. It's pretty amazing, really. Well, I found you and started working with you around my 36th year, which ah. happened to be my third trip around the clock in 12-year increments. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I always mention how interesting it is that I have uh, a large percentage of followers that are 24 years old. Mm. Because that says a lot about you, Elliot. <laughs> yeah, it's very <laughs> fascinating. Yeah. At the top of the clock there, every 12 years, I know I remember experiencing it as a 24-year-old. And then again at 36, so it's interesting that, that those first three years, you refer to as uh, the spiritual body. Yes. And then as we work our way around the clock in quarters, we go from the spiritual body to the mental body. Yes. To the emotional body, which mm -hmm. is six, seven, and eight. And then the physical body, which is 9, 10, and 11. What does that mean that we're moving through these four different bodies? Well, each year on your birthday, you're in that first month, you're going to take on certain, certain themes are going to come to life in your, in your experience. And those themes are what I call the karmic dispensation that you're receiving from your own higher self. Your own higher self says, okay, this year you're going to work with this. Right now, if we're not awake and conscious and paying attention to ourselves, we tend to forget what happened on our birthday pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Right. We tend to forget all the themes and everything else. So the whole point of the working with the clock is to stay conscious of where you are, to keep the themes up front. And in truth, everything we do here begins at the spiritual level and ends at the physical. So we take those themes through the spiritual experience and then through the mental. And by mental, I don't mean the thinking. I mean the higher mind, the Christ itself, the higher consciousness, the higher mind. And we process it there. And then at the bottom of the chart, the mind and the heart balance. That's where we shift from masculine act, action doing to feminine being and allowing. And then we spend the second half of our journey moving through emotional experience of the same themes we've been working with until finally in the last few months before the birthday, we actually have the opportunity to manifest into the physical world everything that we've managed to create out of those themes during the year. And we do that whether we're conscious or not. It's just so much more enriching and fulfilling when you know what you're doing. <laughs> and it doesn't take a lot. It's just about focus, really. You know. Mm -hmm. And it's been very helpful for me to know where I am uh, since I started working with you. And, you know, you mentioned your coaching before. Uh, that's what that's what drew me to you. That's what, uh, you know, well, that's what kept me around. I was drawn to your horoscopes. But this idea of the cosmic path of initiations and sort of being conscious every month as we pass through a, a, a different sign. And then, of course, every 12 years, you know, every year we're in a, a different sign. Yeah. Every year you're working on a different part of your consciousness. And yeah. it seems to perfectly align every single time. Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, well, as above, so below. I mean, that is the whole basis of astrology. Mm -hmm. That there is no separation between what's happening in the cosmos and what's happening in your life. Unless you believe in separation, then you can't see the connection. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So it's really about bringing your attention to where you are. And that produces the realization that there is no separation. You get to realize it every single time. Yeah. Right. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, it, it absolutely is. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the wonderful things uh, that you offer are tools. So I know, you know, it was really cool to get some perspective on where I am and what's going on in my life. Mm -hmm. But uh, as we're moving through each one of these signs, you've offered me tools like affirmations and um, you know, different ways to uh, be 
during yeah. each one of these hours to, to best uh, to to ascend through each one of them and make sure that we're moving upwards. Yes, right. Every hour is associated with a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, there are tools for transmutation which I offer up. I don't offer them up. I just use, the system uses them. I didn't make them up. <laughs> one of them is the violet flame, for example, which I highly recommend everybody learn about. One of the first things I do when we work together is I'll send you a whole load of information on the violet flame so you understand what an amazing tool it is. And it allows you to take any fear-based stuff you're working with and just bring in that, that etheric flame. It's just a vision. It's just a, a kind of a visualization. And you bring it in and it transmutes, it changes, it alchemizes fear back into love. And it works. It sounds hokey, but it really, really works. And I offer up different ways to work with it. Uh, I also offer up the Prima Agni symbol, which rep Prima Agni means the fire of divine love. And it's a neutralizing transmutation tool where wherever you're having a tough moment, if you just visualize this symbol, it will neutralize everything for you. But of course, again, you see how I'm saying, you have to be disciplined about all of it. There's that. There's a mantra every month. There's an ascended master associated with each hour on the clock. If you're into that stuff, you can connect with the masters and they will guide you. There's even just a number and a color associated with each month. Whatever, whatever works for you, you can use, you can make your own to keep your consciousness focused on where you are at any particular time. So yeah, there's a mantra, there's an affirmation every month. People really respond to those really well because they're easy. You know, you, you know, a mantra is just something you repeat over and over again to keep those other thoughts out of your head. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, so they're really helpful. Uh, and then there's the journaling, which is another spiritual discipline, which is very important. It keeps your consciousness on yourself. Make sure you're aware of what you're doing. Because we really do move through our lives without paying attention most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's really helpful to get conscious. That's what it's for. It's about waking up. It's about delivering you to the higher truth of yourself. Yeah. And each month when we talk, I'll tell you where you are on the clock, and then I will send you uh, four pages of information about that, four different, four pages of different uh, parts of understanding, well, different ways to understand that particular part of the clock. So, you know, there's a little talk about the master, who he is, or she is, what the, there's a channel from the master, there's... Uh, there's a there's a little bit about the misqualified energies that could come up there. There's all kinds of stuff on those pages that are very informative and helpful. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Stephanie, this has been really fascinating. I think everything that you've offered thus far uh, is very resourceful and very useful. And anybody who's watching this, I'm sure you could see how this applies to your to your life. Um, I'm offering your, your website up here just so people know that they can go to thecosmicpath.com to learn more about you, to read. You write a lot. It's amazing how much you write. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I write a daily blog. Oh, I thought I turned my ringer off. I write a daily blog and um, that you can get by subscriptions. The only thing on my website that costs money, actually. Everything else is offered freely. There's all kinds of stuff on there. I write weekly horoscopes, which most of my Instagram followers are aware of because uh, I put them up there now every week. And um, I teach classes. I run retreats. I do all kinds of things. So, I mean, I, I, I've been, that website has been mine for, it's now 19 years. And, uh, wow. <laughs> it, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah and, uh, and i i love it it's my passion it's what i do it's what i do yeah uh, i think it's pretty cool that you're on instagram now you've been doing this for a long time and uh now I have you to thank for that elliot yeah <laughs> kicked my butt onto instagram 
and it's I just hit twenty eight thousand followers today. And that's awesome. I know. I'm just so thrilled. So thrilled. Well, I knew people were gonna eat it up because you're you're really good at what you do. Thank you. Thank you. I love what I do. I think that's what it is. Yeah. You know, when you love what you do, you can really offer up something meaningful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, cosmicpath.com. Definitely, I, I would assume that the traffic is highest on your website on Monday mornings because I know I'm there every <laughs> morning, Monday morning, looking at the, the horoscopes. Yeah. So you could always go on Instagram and yes. find them there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stephanie, before we part ways, I just want to open it up to uh, offer you an opportunity to, to just share any last words or anything that you think is important for our, our viewers to know about cosmic consciousness or yourself. Oh, okay. Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is to point out something that I think is obvious to everyone, which is that we are in an extremely transformational time on the planet. This might be the most important time ever to be here. I would even venture to say that everyone here chose to be here because we're moving through this very powerful time and that it is extremely important if you've ever thought about your own consciousness and the expansion of your own awareness and stepping onto the spiritual path, this is the time to do it because the world is going to, the world is heading into a major crisis time. And those of us who, ha- who are awake are going to hold the space for the rest of the planet. And there just can't be enough of us. There just can't be enough. The more, the more, the merrier. <laughs> so, you know, that's really what my work is about. It's about helping people wake up to themselves and realize their true purpose. And that's what this whole journey is about. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty critical time on the planet. Yeah. Well, thank you for being a, a part of what's going on on the planet. Thank you for being a guiding light for me in one of my darkest times in my life. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm honored to be there for you, Elliot. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and thank you for sharing with us today. Thanks for having having me it was really fun i enjoyed it okay great well thanks for listening guys and uh we'll talk to you next time